This is the activity that is the extension of the book that we read, 10 Little Caterpillars. And so if you will get this selection of materials out of your envelope, we can get started. This is going to be the base page that has the heading and the sweep quote, until by and by the 10th little caterpillar became a butterfly. And so there's hope as the little caterpillars that we're going to make that we're being inspired by the cover of the book that we're going to make them and they are all dreaming of being a butterfly. But first they're having to eat, 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 munch, munch, munch. Okay, so see this is a shape of a heart. It's the color of a green leaf. So we provided you with the shape of the heart with the back side of your paper being inspired by this little crinkly look of the tissue of a collage, which was the art used to illustrate this book. And so we're gonna cut out the heart and we're gonna add the caterpillars. So if we were at school doing this table work, we would be taking this color copy of the cover of our book and putting it out on the table for you to be inspired by. So I'm just gonna go ahead and suggest that as you get your writing and coloring materials together that you may wanna just freeze frame this on your device, whether you are working off an iPad or your television. We've seen all kinds of uh, neat pictures of you all using a laptop or a desktop computer to do your work. And so just go ahead and take a minute because we're gonna be looking at how all these different caterpillars are, are colored and shaped with their different designs because even though they are all 10 caterpillars, they all turn into 10 different moths and butterflies. Okay, so now you can see by their special little shapes how they've identified some of the features of these caterpillars. So some of them have stripes that run the length of their body and some of them have stripes that go across their body. Some of them have patterns like an AB pattern, the black and gold and black and gold or black and yellow and black and yellow. Some of them have the color head that is different than the stripes on their body and some of them have the same color head that sort of matches their body. But this is called whimsical. It's not exactly how they look, but it definitely gives us inspiration as to how we would like our 10 caterpillars to look that we are gonna make for your artwork. So whether you want to choose for it to be one that is like this one, if you wanna match them up, see how you can match them up. And if you were doing this number nine, you could find your yellow crayon and your green crayon and make it exactly the same. You could take number seven and you could find your black and your yellow and do the stripes and then change up and make the head the color red. So just take a minute and decide what you wanna do. If you wanna do some the way they're in the book and don't forget like in your crayons, you can see sometimes there's a true red, sometimes there's a magenta red. So it just depends on what you want to do. I'm gonna go ahead and start my number seven. You can go in any order because, and you can um, cut, Go. feel free to go across the lines a little bit because you are going to be cutting these out. So just do your best. But we're going to be it's a nice way to look and practice your numbers. You're going to you're going to do some of these you're practicing your numbers on your other sheets when you're actually writing them. This one is going to be for just using the caterpillars, but we're just numbering them for now. Okay, so see how I was inspired by this one and I made this one? So now, if you wanna just do any kind that you want, I'm gonna even take out a pink one. 
And I'm going to change number eight up. I'm not going to make eight the way that it is in the book. I'm going to get out some different colors that I would like to introduce and create and design my own kind of different cup. So it's up to you. Half of them can be real and half of them can be in imagination. So that would be five plus five is 10. That's half if you wanna go in that direction. Okay, and if you have um, some time that you wanna take, you can do these and then you can come back to this that would be another idea. But what I do want you to do is I want you to, when you're done coloring, to start, it's easier to cut these apart. Remember how we do that? And it's definitely easier to color first and then cut second. So I'm not gonna cut out these ones that are black and white. I'm not gonna cut them out until I have finished coloring. Okay, you can put this in your trash basket. And then let me just give you an idea. I'm gonna go over to number seven and I'm gonna cut on the line just so, cause it's easier for me to cut this caterpillar out when the rectangle is separate from the others. So I'm gonna go around. See how I'm just skipping those cuts there because it will still look great without having to go under each one. Okay. There we go. Cute. All right. We have this kind of scissor. It's cool. And that's probably the one that you have mostly at home, but just in case you might have a scissor that makes a zigzag line. Some of you do. If you would like to pause, do you see how some of these lines are cut straight and some are zigzag? So if you're thinking right now, oh, hey, yes, we have a pair of scissors that does that, then why don't you get one? Otherwise, it's perfectly fine for you to open and close, open and close, thumbs up cutting open and close, open and close. And then if you do maybe have this other pair of scissors, you can mix it up. You can add a wavy cut to your heart sh shaped leaf. And I'm gonna put that one down and then I'm gonna put some more. Up and down, up and down, up and down. And then I'm gonna maybe switch one more time. But again, the straight line works perfectly fine, but this just gives you a little bit of interest in how we say we love the details. I like that, it does look like, I think that they were in using this idea because the caterpillars are eating, they're munching, aren't they? You're gonna use a hole puncher, and if you don't have a hole puncher, then you can be tearing the leaf. It would be like good for your hand muscles, including hole punching. That's good for your hand muscles too. So if you are making a little hole on the side of the heart where this little caterpillar wants to be munching, see that? You're gonna to wait to put your glue on because you wanna be able to hold the heart and make more hole punches, okay? So like this can be where the next one's gonna go and this one can be where the next one's gonna go. And maybe this one's eating on this side and this one might be eating on this side. And so you can just go around your heart-shaped leaf and it's okay if like you hole punch, some hole punches work better than others, like that one worked so well, but some you have to go ahead and give a little tug. It can even be a half circle where the little um, caterpillar is starting to munch it out. So don't worry if it does that either. So I'm gonna go ahead now that there's a place for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I think we should do 10, don't you? 
10 spots for caterpillars. Now you can glue it on. Okay, as inspired by our cover. You can also think about the story, and I'm going to open it back up to one of the pages, um, especially as we are talking about um, finding things in nature and showing and telling. This sixth little caterpillar, I don't know if you noticed, was carried off to school in a little jar, munching away at the leaf that was provided in this little temporary habitat. And we hear about how um, it's a fun way to catch and observe little creatures, but we need to always remember to let them go again. But I love how one of our students uh, in the art center asked to make a jar with paper. And so another collage jar, and you could draw your own creature, whether it's a butterfly or a lizard even, uh, that you can place inside your jar but I'm looking at again and seeing some of the detail that has been added with the hole punching um, and then this is my little rendition of this sixth little caterpillar do you see how I even left some white how she left some white as well and then just gave the little red eye there's another one here in this a uh, couple pages ahead that was frightened and so that's how we remember that this one was frightened they are jumping back right because they're worried to maybe this hen is going to have them for a little snack and but then do you see what I did is I picked my own colors to draw her in a different way but I love this little jagged edge on the leaf and just how we were talking about with our scissors using straight scissors and jagged scissors to sort of mix up the drawings that you are going to be doing even at your home. Here's my 10th little caterpillar and that's the one that we finish up with in our quote until by and by the 10th little caterpillar is the one that became the butterfly at the end which is then on the top of your paper that we provided for your background, your base. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the heart that you all um, have cut out now. You have cut some straight lines, maybe you've cut some jagged lines, maybe you've ripped out some portions of it to make it look like it's been, it's been eaten by a hungry caterpillar and glued it on. And we're recommending that you cut out these rectangles first. Okay, and then that way you can um, divide up your cutting and your coloring. It's kind of like a pattern. So you don't get too tired of doing any one thing all at one time. And this project could be one that goes over a couple days. That was one thing that we found in a video uh, about Lois when she was a young girl. She had a table of art that she was allowed to keep out at home and that she could keep all her supplies at. And that way when she was working, she could... Um, do some art for a while and then maybe go play outside and then come back and work some more on a project and it doesn't have to be finished all at one time. And so and once you have these all cut out into the rectangles and colored, because like I said, it's much easier to color them before you have cut them into a tiny body. Okay, and I love how this one, do you see how this one, it kind of looks like he's upside down, but some caterpillars have the little hairs that come out of the back of their back, and then they have little feet, and the, the zigzags can stand for their feet, or they can have as many feet as like a centipede could have. So that's why they're all so different, and that's why they turn in to different insects, the moths and the butterflies and all the different shapes and sizes. So once you've gotten these colored and, you're, and the rectangles are cut out, that's when you're gonna wanna take some time, okay? And you're gonna want to go, like we said, just around the tips, you know, unless you really wanna go in and out like this zigzag cut, which is fine and always good practice, it is not something that you have to do on this kind of work. 
we're mainly concerned about just finding a spot for the shape of this caterpillar. And this is another one. And it can you spy the shape and design that's on this one? Do you see how this one was made differently? Instead of doing black and white, a uh, black and red, we use the blue and the green and a little bit of yellow even. Okay, so it can go in the same place as that one or not. Again, you get to pick. Okay, and so then these are a little easier to cut because they don't have the legs and the little hairs sticking out. But look at those antenna. I definitely want to leave those on. So I'm just going to go around the antenna and it goes straight down the back of this one. Remember, this one's the one that got to go to school in a jar for show and tell. So I'm going to pick a little spot, a little hole punched out for that one to continue to munch. Because, boy, that's one thing we certainly have learned, isn't it, boys and girls, that caterpillars, they sure are hungry. Their whole purpose is to munch, munch, and eat, eat, and eat enough so that their little bellies are full for the time that they spend in a chrysalis. It's almost like when the bears hibernate and they have to go in and live underground for all that time and they don't have a place to go out and go to Chick-fil-A <laughs> to go eat. So they need to eat all their yummy leaves and things before they go into the chrysalis and then, and then they emerge as a beautiful butterfly. Okay, so you're just going to keep going around till you have how many? Ooh, 10. You are correct. How many do we have right now? One, two, three, four, five. So we're halfway done, but this is where you get to stop and you can take a little break. Um, this is one other great example of one of our students uh, after the lesson was over and centers had started and this was in the art center and we had our little handwriting without tears um, caterpillar page where we counted to 10 just like you're going to use also at home and designed even more ways that you can design and decorate the different little caterpillars and cut out a heart and some leaves and even had a special guest visit from where? Who does that look like? You're right. It's the very hungry caterpillar. So again, be inspired because this is something else that you can do on top of um, some of the supplies that we've provided. You can just use some of your scraps and make things from that. I know that um, some other collage artists have used lots of fabrics and all kinds of things, different ways to use the hole puncher, the dot that comes out of the hole puncher. So even some of the green ones that you punched out of your leaf shape heart, you could use those in making a garden. Here's our one that was afraid, remember that one? Enjoy and have fun. Be creative.